Gauchos round up a herd of cattle in central Argentina. It's market time and most of these animals are soon to be sold off to abattoirs. For now, they're transferred to a fresh field on La Luz farm, an hour's drive from Mar de Plata, the country's second largest city. La Luz is spread over 1,800 hectares, one of hundreds of farms in the area. The pampas in this region stretch as far as the eye can see. With over 1,000 head of cattle at any one time, La Luz is a family-run operation in a country recognized as one of the world's largest beef producers. Rancher Renato Briano oversees the farm with his son, Rafael, but the day-to-day -day running is soon to be taken over by his daughter, Renata. The family makes weekly visits to La Luz from the city. The cattle breeding cycle here is continuous. The Brianos, like most Argentines, pride themselves on the quality of their meat. They say they produce the best beef in the world. I think it's down to the natural development and the walking. The animals are not stationary, standing still and accumulating cholesterol like they do in a feedlot. The animals are walking, looking for water, looking for grass, walking the full length and breadth of their fields because they're very curious animals. But these days, it's not the quality of meat that dominates family discussions. It's the world's BSE crisis, mad cow disease. There's no doubt that the Europeans produce great beef. It's a terrible shame what's happening. I feel very emotional about what's happening to their industry. Not because the difficulties of the Europeans could be to my advantage as an Argentine producer. No, I'm also suffering because the same thing could happen to us. Argentines are passionate about beef. Every Sunday, hundreds attend a mini gaucho festival outside Buenos Aires' oldest abattoir, El Matadero. The day is a celebration of the gaucho way of life, as much as a chance to enjoy a giant street barbecue. Here, cooking meat is an art form. The traditional life of the gaucho cowboy is still very much alive in Argentina. It's a life that revolves around the pampas. Many see them as the key to Argentine beef's distinctive taste. The highlight for many visitors to the festival is watching the traditional carrear de la sortija, race of the ring, where a rider must insert a sharp point through a small circular ring from the back of a galloping horse. If the ring is removed successfully, the rider lifts his arm in a heroic feat of horsemanship. Dressed in their traditional ponchos and cowboy hats, couples dance throughout the afternoon. Were so-called mad cow disease to infect Argentina's beef industry, the livelihood of thousands of gauchos like these could be at risk. Next door, at Liniers Market, it's business as usual. It's the largest of its type in the country and animals are brought here from throughout Argentina. Bidders are summoned to sales, which go on throughout the day. National and international buyers come to Liniers, where auctioneers like Juan Batista oversee operations. Workers here insist their herds are BSE free. We have a traceability here. If any European countries are listening to me, we have a traceability with our cows. In other words, the cows that we have sold today or on any other given day, we know their origin. We know where they come from, from what farm, who is their producer, who they were born from, and what quality the meat is. It is vital to know this, the exact history of each and every cow. Here, like everywhere else, the talk is of BSE. Despite strict monitoring and government control, the threat of the disease is real. The Canadian government have now banned beef imports from Brazil, Argentina's closest neighbor. Trade regulations have meant the United States and Mexico are following suit. It would seem the threat is getting nearer. 
Juan Batista remains positive. If we analyze this closely, 100% of the meat we sell here, be it cow, lamb or pork, is country bred meat. In other words, it is natural, it is so-called ecological meat. I think this is going to eventually play in our favor. It has helped us in the past. In the rest of the world, people, even though they don't buy our meat in enormous quantities, know us for the quality of our meat. It has a tremendous taste, it is digestible, and it is tender, which is fundamental. But the government is not so confident. In January, they announced the ban of all imports of beef products from most European countries. There are, shall we say, levels of risk which have led to this decision. The ongoing problem of BSE in Europe has left government organizations no choice but to take these measures. At La Luz, it's business as usual. The Brianos round up the next herd to be sold. The cows are counted and numbered. With no BSE in Argentina, prices are steady. But any possible ban on beef imports could cripple the country's already unstable economy. Brazil's beef industry was also thought to be clean. It may be a matter of time before attention turns to the pampas. Ariel Calabria has worked at La Luz for over 30 years. I think it could possibly arrive at a more intensive farm, a farm using intensive methods where the animals are fed a lot of grain or such like. The little I know about the subject, the serious problems have developed in meat grown in these types of farms where they feed cows and fatten them in enclosed areas. Here, as you can see, they are brought up in the open. I think the chances here are minimal. I can't say it's impossible. I'm not authorized to say it's impossible. But I think the chances of this sickness here are practically non-existent in natural or even semi-intensive farming methods. But Renato, like the Argentine government, watches developments nervously. Despite repeated assurances that their meat is clean, the fact remains that worldwide sales are still dropping as consumer confidence continues to fall. For now, all the Briano family can do is watch and wait 